This is the second of a two-part video on anonymous functions in MATLAB. The last video reviewed the syntax and construction of anonymous functions. In this video, we'll apply that in some examples. Let's start by writing an anonymous function which evaluates the parabola y equals x squared plus x plus 5. The anonymous function handle is named y. It accepts one input, x, and returns the value of the parabola governed by the equation. Don't neglect the dot preceding the caret. We need it to fully vectorize the function. Let's see what the value of the parabola is when x equals 10. We see that the y value is 115. Verify this on the calculator if you want. The output is not currently stored in a variable because we never assigned it one, so let's change that real quick. Now we can use the yval variable in subsequent calculations if needed. Let's plot the parabola from x equals negative 2 to x equals positive 2 using the fplot command so we can see what it looks like. We provide the function handle y to the fplot command and the x-axis limits as a two-element vector. I also bumped up the line width to 8 by providing the appropriate name, value, pair. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now let's do a more advanced example. What if we wanted to evaluate a parabola with potentially varying coefficients? This is the generalized version of the problem we just did. Now we want to provide a, b, and c as inputs in addition to x. I caught the new anonymous function yy just to differentiate it from the one we just made. Now let's give a, b, and c values and see if we can get the same result as last time. We can see that yval and yyval are identical. Let's plot yy on this figure as well. We got an error. When using fplot, the anonymous function must only be a function of a single variable, but yy is technically a function of four variables. Even though we define static values of a, b, and c, yy is still considered a function of four variables because they're listed as inputs to the anonymous function. MATLAB considers a, b, and c to be independent variables along with x, even though we gave them values down here. What we have to do is define another anonymous function with only one input, which calls the yy function. This creates an anonymous function that accepts one argument, x. The expression is the yy function itself. It calls the yy function, but now the a, b, and c parameters are fixed because we didn't provide them as inputs to this new anonymous function. Basically, we told MATLAB to plot the anonymous function, which directly calls the yy function but only uses one input, x. This is essentially how we trick MATLAB. The overlapping lines on the plot confirms this. The last example we'll do is another form of trickery. Anonymous functions can only have one output, but that output can be a vector. Let's say we want to convert a speed from kilometers per hour to both meters per second and miles per hour. We can do both conversions at once if we do each conversion as an individual element within a vector. The anonymous function is called convert speed, and it accepts v, which is the velocity in kilometers per hour. The first element of the vector converts it to meters per second, and the second element converts it to miles per hour. When we run the code, we can see that both converted speeds appear in the command window. This is because we technically only have one output, 
but that output happens to be a two element vector. While this is obviously syntactically feasible, I wouldn't recommend using anonymous functions to return multiple things. The purpose of an anonymous function is utter simplicity, so abide by that and only write anonymous functions which return one number or thing. If you need to make multiple outputs, write a user-defined function instead. I hope these two videos helped you learn about anonymous functions and the fplot command. Their purpose might be unclear because they're so simple, but we'll be using them extensively later on to expedite some otherwise lengthy number crunching. See you next time.